no, would never go and ask someone a question like this where they could just easily turn around and say no. Like to, I, I could never see, I could never, I could never see. I could never see he would ask him for I could, loyalty? I could never see President Trump sitting down with someone and saying, can I have your loyalty? That just, it, it really? doesn't. Really? Yes, but he, but he has seem, asked that of no, all he, of his I, I staff. Cannot, he won't I hire cannot, people no, who have I, said I negative him, things about him. I worked for him for seven months, and he never at one point. Uh, well, because he interview, already knew you were loyal. Your, can I, uh, I mean, I'd worked against him in the primary. How did he know? So but I just, he never, just I mean, take a step I back. James Comey's been interviewed by Mueller, which means if he, if this account isn't true, then he essentially probably well, lied. You know, he, here's the interesting thing about that dinner. I mean, the way he describes that dinner is it, it's something like a, he describes it as a shakedown. Now, right. remember, the president views the briefing in early January, the, the, the after the intelligence uh, m briefing, where he gets told about the dossier, he viewed Comey as shaking him mm -hmm. down. And here we are later that same month, they're having this private dinner, and he asks for this loyalty oath, according to Comey, and it, the way Comey describes it is he views it as the president attempting to shake him down because he's basically saying, you know, in exchange for your loyalty, I'm going to let you keep your job. And how important is that in terms of him being the, the key witness here? And that's how him he viewed it, Laura Coates. Extremely important yeah. because the way you prove obstruction of justice is through intent, which means somebody's mm -hmm. mental state, what they were intending or believed. So everyone's interpretation is very, very important in terms of what he meant and why he was doing it. But, you know, one way to gauge somebody's credibility who would be judging someone's mental state is whether or not they're saying things that are unflattering about themselves and making concessions they, they wouldn't right. do so. Mm -hmm. Remember, Comey said in that part of the interview as well, I didn't have the guts yeah, to right, say yeah. to the right. president of the United States, I'm the FBI right. director, why, I'm six foot eight. Why didn't he I'm gonna, quit? Well, well, my, my, well, he no. was fired first. My, right. The answer to that really is, he said he didn't have the guts to say, I won't but give also, you loyalty. In that respect, it's he, odd. He went to the press conference uh, with regard to Secretary Clinton just before the election because he had to establish the moral, uh, the kind of the moral fabric in which this election was going to be viewed. He thought that she was going to win and he didn't want it to be an illegitimate presidency. I mean, he's so conflicted with this. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I the one to tell the right thing? Well, well he, he said, though, he right said because right because right Loretta Lynch is the he, perfect place to wrap up because that's what we're going to talk about this on the other side of the break. Because I know we've all been wanting to talk about this coming up. Comey talks about that controversial handling of Hillary Clinton's email investigation and why he knew it was a no win situation. You won't want to miss it. Stick around. Send it. I would. Down that path lies the death of the FBI as an independent force in American life. If I ever start considering whose political fortunes will be affected by a decision, we're done. We're just another player in the, in the tribal battle. And uh, we're back with our special report talking about James Comey's new bombshell interview that he did this evening with ABC. He's not only taking aim at President Trump, he's opening up more about the Hillary Clinton email investigation. And here's a little bit more about mm -hmm. what he said. Okay, um, so I want to bring you in, Patty, mm -hmm. on this, because uh, clearly he is trying to explain himself. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you talk about the Hillary Clinton email investigation publicly, publicly not the Trump campaign investigation uh, right. that had been going on? Why did you release the letter just before right. the election? In your view, did he give a satisfactory answer on that? Uh, no, mm -hmm. absolutely not. Here's what he said about why he didn't uh, disclose that there was an investigation going on on the Trump campaign during the election because it would have been brutally unfair to the Trump people. Right. What about being brutally unfair to the Democratic nominee 10 days away from the election? You know, again, I um, have no reason to believe that Jim Comey is not telling the truth. And I can, if I try really hard, put my wrap my head around his reason of transparency for letting the letter out 10 days ahead. But if that's the reason transparency, then why not release that the Trump the Trump campaign was being investigated also. Right, but now we're never going to know. Unfortunately, we will never know if that letter was determinative in that election. But it we do know that it negatively impacted the Hillary Clinton campaign and therefore it gave a boost to the Trump campaign. And if even one Clinton voter either stayed home mm -hmm. or voted for Trump or voted for Stein, then that was bad judgment. You on know, the Patty, part. you're talking about the, the difference between his approach to the Clinton inve investigation mm -hmm. and the Trump investigation. 
What struck me was the fact that he really didn't have an answer for why, and, and George asked the right question, why when they found out about the, uh, the emails that were on Anthony Weider's computer, which is the whole reason he released mm. this letter saying they were reopening the investigation, why they didn't quickly try to figure out what it was and decide whether or not they needed to go public with it. I, I think exactly, by the way. Exactly. Well, exactly. But they, they, the answer is, there isn't an answer because they ended up finding out that there was no there there before the election. I think the most, right. I think by far this is the most damaging thing that James Comey says mm -hmm. in this book and in his interviews because he both, he's trying to have it both ways. He says yep, that we cannot, the, we cannot let politics influence us, but he also admits that the fact that she was leading in the polls right. did right. enter into his head. That is, wonder, that is a key wonder, point. Jeffrey, I want Jeffrey Tubin to come in on this because that seems to have influenced, frankly, his and many other decisions along this campaign because part of his assumption was if I don't do this when she's president, then there'll be a question about whether her election was somehow uh, unfairly helped along. God, I thought that was bizarre and and right. yeah. like exactly. off off yeah. off key and, and and wrong. You know, I think there's this weird sort of Washington conventional wisdom that if the left is attacking you for one thing and the right is attacking you for another, you must be right because you're in the middle. But you can be wrong on both, right. Right. or you could be right on one and right and, and wrong, wrong on the other. And and his explanation, particularly for the October 28th mm -hmm. letter, is so weak. Yes. And and the, this sort of help and those I had no choice. I mean, I was you know, he, he had every choice in the world mm -hmm. and he never acknowledges the incredibly strong Justice Department tradition exactly. of not right, interfering right. with elections. And that might be the first time. Sorry, sorry just to know that Mr. Miller agree. and Jeffrey Tubin agree. agree. <laughs> but I just say he absolutely showed the opposite of what he said. Mm -hmm. Because what he's, you know, what he said was, if I ever start considering whose political fortunes would be affected, we're done. Right. We're done. We're just another player. And, and I wish That's exactly I, what he did. And, no, well, thank you very much, Jason. That is exactly, <laughs> exactly. that is exactly and what And it's exactly what, what the FBI is not supposed right. to and do. And this right. is the key criticism of James Comey. I will go back to what I said before. It does not mean that he's not telling the truth Correct. in everything else. But, but there was... There were political considerations because he thought well, Hillary Clinton. Can, can, can he be the last you, you Boy Scout, but he also hold wants to be the one uh, it, who goes and deter picks winners and losers. It well, makes one wonder if Trump had been ahead, would he would he would he have released the Trump investigation? That's interesting. Right, it hold, really hold does. That, hold that thought if you can, because we, we do have, we do have much more time to discuss this. And still ahead, we've heard from James Comey. Now, how is President Trump reacting to his interview? We'll be back in a moment calling President Trump morally unfit to be president in this new interview. The president unleashing a preemptive strike, calling his fired FBI director slippery, a slime ball, out of whack, a terrible director of the FBI, proven li 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 leaker and liar, weak and untruthful. Dana what Bash. What does he really think? Well, clearly yeah. <laughs> his response is to direct fire back at James of Comey, which, which is a frequent Trump response to being mm -hmm. attacked. Uh, but, uh, does it work? Well, it works to help James Comey sell books. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for somebody who is very uh, interested in ratings and size and how much people watch and how much people read and and numbers like that, he's 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 given James Comey a big solid here by doing this kind of but thing. Does, but does it engaging. in the bigger picture as he directs fire at him? I mean, and beyond the base, does it yeah. begin to get people to ask questions, Gloria, about James Comey's credibility? Sure. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what the president is doing. But mm -hmm. I would say Comey's throwing it right back at him. I mean, mm -hmm. saying it, he felt like he was uh, uh, investigating the Cosa Nostra again. I mean, saying today the he yeah, he tweeted today that yeah. there are three presidents mentioned in his right. book. Yeah. One of them is a counterpoint to, to, the, right. to his right. points of it, leadership. It, the president does not reflect the values of this country. Uh, he talks about women like they're pieces of meat, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think he's just given it, given it right back to him. And by the way, that doesn't do the larger argument any good because the serious stuff yeah. that's got to be investigated about Russia and this election and potential collusion, et cetera, et cetera, is the, the stuff that, that is in this book that is serious, mm -hmm. that needs yeah. to be. Yep. Th and, and that Mueller and he, he's a witness with. to Robert Mueller's investigation, a sworn, you know, giving sworn testimony yes. in that investigation. Yes. And you have to wonder, I'm just wondering, Jason Miller, as you're watching this, you know the president very well. Uh, assuming he watched it tonight, hard to think that he, 
He didn't. He will chance. be briefed on it at the very least. <laughs> what do you think stood out to him? I think probably the fact that there's nothing new. I think, and also uh, for the well, there was a there's, few there's, things. I mean, there's the, the interview Comey itself. Said that there's evidence think, potentially of obstruction mm-hmm. of justice. But I think also the president uh, is someone who watches a lot of news, who reads a lot of newspapers, and I think as he looks around and sees all the uh, the folks in the media as well as the the left of center uh, folks in the Democratic Party who are criticizing James Comey tonight, I think the president's probably going to call some attention to that. I think uh, you're going to see a lot of folks on the right, uh, aside from the president, taking a lot mm-hmm. of issues with the uh, the ill. Legalities uh, with some of the the leaking and the lying but that you, we saw. The from leaking and the lying, though. I mean, this is a president who just on Friday pardoned right. Scooter Libby, who mm-hmm. leaked the name of a mm-hmm. CIA operative, and then was convicted of lying uh, perjury. And also, this is a president who was lied, caught lying on so mm-hmm. many occasions. I don't know what, what the count is. I mean, it's what, what I just want to ask you this: You say James Comey is a liar. How so? Because he said that he didn't leak. He said his, this. He said that he didn't leak, and he did. He gave no, he didn't. He, said, he, he, said, it. he, he did said it's true it. that, he, that he's yes. he admitted to giving those memos. But when he testified, he did that before the memos came right. out, when mm-hmm. he had said that he had never been an anonymous source. Then he had, he did admit that he gave the memos to a friend who then leaked it to his the explanation friend. tonight was he said, and, and whether you accept this as su- sufficient, he said that there were all these news cameras at the end of my driveway, and therefore I had to leak it out via a friend. And is, he did, is that what he said when he was on the hill? He wanted a special when account? he was on the hill, he didn't say, "Hey, I packaged everything up and gave it to my friend from Columbia and said, let's go ahead and leak it out to everyone." He did uh, say he did. This is part of a talking narrative and talking that. That's points. How we know. Because the president of the United States, most people think about the FBI and they don't know every director, everyone who's there now. They know Christopher Ray, maybe. This is all mm-hmm. part of a concerted effort to try to discredit the FBI and the investigative arm of DOJ as part of the larger campaign. Mm-hmm. Right. That if the ultimate investigation does not exonerate okay. the president of the United States, that they have been sufficiently discredited mm-hmm. in some way. But I think it's quite transparent and quite a fig leaf if he is preemptively striking mm-hmm. at all this right. point. Well, thank you all so much. And just days from now, Jake Tapper will sit down for Comey, uh, with Comey rather, for the former FBI director's first cable news television interview since President Trump fired him. You can see it Thursday on the lead at 4 p.m. Eastern with Jake Tapper. Down of the president, Comey saying that he's not fit for the office. Let's have a listen. Is Donald Trump unfit to be president? Yes, but not in the way I often hear people talk about it. I don't buy the stuff about him being mentally incompetent or early stages of dementia. He strikes me as a person of above average intelligence who's tracking conversations and knows what's going on. I don't think he's medically unfit to be president. I think he's morally unfit to be president. White lives matter! White lives matter! A person who sees moral equivalence in Charlottesville, who talks about and treats women like they're pieces of meat, who lies, constantly about matters big and small and insist the American people believe it, that person's not fit to be president of the United States on moral grounds. Mm. Truly remarkable words there. Phil Mudd, you've served in government in senior positions. Have you seen uh, a person uh, who served at that high a level dismissing a president's fitness for office? I, I can't remember anything like this. It makes me a bit uncomfortable. There's two pieces of this. What James Comey thinks is a private citizen, he's welcome to his, his thoughts, as we all are. I think there's a lot of people who serve at the Bureau, Bureau me included, who wince a little bit. Because if you have a narrative that says when this investigation was initiated, it was initiated by people who have a perspective that says this president doesn't deserve to be in power. People are going to look at this interview and say, well, there is a deep state out there. There are people like Jim Comey who believe this, and that, that's going to feed a narrative that says the basis for this investigation is from people like that who want the president out. I, I respect his opinion as an American citizen, but I think it's going to feed a narrative that the White House is hey, going Phil, to Hey, Phil, I, I, think, I think there's a counterpoint to that. And I think if you listen to what Comey is saying, I think what he's trying to tell you, what he's telegraphing out there, is that this guy is not doing this stuff because he's crazy. This is purposeful. He's got intent. If, if there is obstruction, he did it on purpose. Um, I think that there is a subtext that you hear coming from him. In other words, he's trying to say, like, all you people who think that Donald Trump is just doing this because he's just throwing stuff at the, uh, at the wall, he's saying this is all purposeful. That's what he's, but, I think he's trying to But, but let me say this. If he's telegraphing things, one thing he, he's clearly telegraphing is that he has become a political figure. He started out the interview and in saying that he was very proud. All of his family went to the 
resistance march or the, the women's march, which was largely an anti-Trump march. So to me, he, he has become a political figure. And, and the importance of that, and, and I'll say my daughter went also. <laughs> <laughs> You know, trying to work you with her. You got the resistance in your house. Uh, right side of history. But, the, Come on. but, but the, the truth of the matter is, he's a political figure. Why is that important? Political because he's criticized the president? Um, because he has dabbled in and out of it, and he's just become a lightning rod. I, I, I like to call that he, a he, was, he drew the ire of both. Hillary Clinton side and Donald Trump side. <laughs> this is someone who. No, well, you, yeah, but Pam, so how you know, is he both, si both sides, both sides used him politically. The Democrats did not like him when he was going after right, Hillary. So then how, is and he then Republicans how is he a partisan? How is he a partisan? Explain that. Uh, well, as I said, when you say proudly, first thing in an interview, and it was a totally well, irrelevant. Was, it was irrelevant. <laughs> he didn't go. And, it, and your said, daughter went. Are you a, a um, Democrat? Because you your know, went my daughter went. I'm confessing this on the, the, the right, world stage. You're trying to make the point <laughs> that he is a partisan but I think because his family Pam, I think, I think I think no one would accuse me of being objective or nonpartisan. <laughs> right. On, but but here's here's my point. It, very important, and I learned this from Hillary Clinton when she accused the Republicans of the right wing conspiracy. She took Whitewater and made it a political issue. He has taken this investigation and made it more political. And in our tribal society, because of that, people are going to just as feel so. I want to offer something a little bit The president himself different. has attacked entire institutions' rights as political if they've criticized. I mean, he said that about the intelligence community. He said that about the, the FBI. Is the president guilty of the same kind of Well, I don't know. You've got people like Lisa Page and Peter Strzok and and Andrew McCabe and uh, Wiseman, who, who are uh, a very anti-Trump, and I'd say political along and the way. By the and, way, there are a lot of anti-Clinton people but, in the but, FBI. But I'm like, I'm like Phil, I, wanna, I like the days that Phil Mudd was, was referring to when particularly people in the military, people who were wearing the uniform, people in the CIA and the FBI, they obviously had their own opinions, but you did not know what they were. And here's a guy immediately, while there's kind of f fresh blood on the tracks, goes out and writes a book. So why couldn't he have waited five years? He did it because he wanted to stay. Because into five the, years uh, from argument. now, nobody would buy that book, as my agents would say. Look, I think <laughs> nobody that's on is going to buy nobody it gonna buy that book in five years. I, I want to offer a counter. I actually do not think uh, James Comey is a partisan or political. I actually think James Comey doesn't have a political bone in his body. Hence, why we are getting such conflicting and confusing messages. In one in one breath, he says, you know, I, I didn't uh, have any political calculations when I made these decisions, and in another breath, he says, and I, I thought Hillary Clinton was going to win, so I thought it would be important. In one breath. Um, he says he he wants to uh, you know he wants to have a good working relationship with the president, but he also knows that he probably shouldn't be at dinner. Like when when I saw that part of the interview where uh, former director Comey noted that he got a phone call and he thought it would be a group in, a group situation at dinner, so he went. It immediately struck me that as a veteran of the FBI, as a veteran of law enforcement, James Comey didn't have any one of his staff members call over to the White House staff to find out what the particulars were of this dinner to, in fact, uphold um, the independence of the FBI. So I, I actually just think he doesn't have a political bone in his body, and that's why he's botching this altogether. Abby Phillip, you, you cover the White House, of course. Uh, we have not heard from the president yet, although I imagine that we will. I mean, he, he preemptively struck, as time. we said before. How is the president receiving uh, this criticism, morally unfit, treats women like pieces of meat, phrases like that coming from Comey's mouth. Well, the president is not surprised by any of this. I mean, I think he has been so angry with Comey for so long that this is just icing on the cake. The issue for the president right now and for his staff really is that he's he's been here for the last several days, had had a, has had a lot of time to watch this coverage, to, to digest it, to stew on it. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow morning, uh, he's going to be doing the same thing, and it's going to be uh, pretty challenging for them to keep a lid on uh, really a president who is overflowing with anger toward Comey. But I think also we've seen him become much more comfortable with his own justification for getting rid of him altogether. And I think some of Comey's interview uh, really fed into some of the feeling that the president had that he was wrongly criticized for firing him. But Comey has proven that he did things for political reasons, uh, that he botched uh, various uh, issues throughout the, the last year and prior to that, and that the president had every right to fire him because he just simply wasn't doing a good job. I mean, I think the fact that Democrats and Republicans are finding things in this interview to criti criticize Comey for mm -hmm. is going to be one of those things that gives the president a little bit of a boost going into Monday. Michael Zell, Comey responding to that because George Stephanopoulos asked him questions along along these lines. I mean, his answer was, 
you know, perhaps we're just a, I'm just a flawed human being who, who was doing this, made some mistakes along the way, but, you know, my interest was in doing my best to, to, to do my job. Does that, as you heard that, did, did you buy that as an explanation? Well, I, I think that he believes that he was doing the best he should do under very difficult circumstances. Mm. I, for one, felt that the July 5th press conference where he said critical things about Hillary Clinton but decided not to prosecute her was wrong and mm -hmm. against Justice Department policy. I thought when he wrote the letter to Congress in October to say, we are reopening it, it was wrong and against Justice Department policy. And were there not a Russia investigation and a new administration were to come in and saw that, they might say, you know, this is a fellow who we might want to replace or discipline in some way because that is not acceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. Now we fast forward to the current interview and he's explaining his thought process and you know fine but I think it was just wrong ab initio at the outset mm -hmm. it was it was wrong so what I found interesting mostly and Evan has been talking about it is what did he tell us in this interview that portends where Mueller may be going what are the pieces of sure. law that that we we, we 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 learned here and we learned a couple of things that I think are interesting one is the contradiction between the request for loyalty and the denial of that request by the president mm -hmm. the second is letting Flynn go Yes. And clearing the Oval Office and his sense that this is intentional yes. behavior to obstruct an investigation. The next is the pretext that he saw of the firing, which when he was fired, I think Rosenstein wrote a very compelling letter. About his uh, handling of the Clinton email. The, which I think was a compelling letter mm -hmm. and it could be a basis for firing. But then the president goes and says to the foreign minister of Russia in the Oval Office, and to Lester Hulse, I did it because of Russia. That's an intentional act on the president, potentially to observe. So and he gave us some things. his state of mind, the witness's state of mind, it's, versus the president's actual state of mind? Well, but that. the witness speaks to the president's state of mind. So I think that there are a couple of things here that Comey told us, which says, this is what I told Mueller. And you, Mueller, have to look into this to see whether or not great. this amounts to obstruction it's of justice a, or other such point. things. And Evan, no one's co covered this uh, investigation more closely than you. Uh, but as you were hearing him there, I mean, in effect, we can expect what he said on the air tonight is, you know, at a minimum, what he's told the special counsel, I imagine, with more right. detail and under oath. But describing that meeting about Michael Flynn, he said he felt he's asking me to drop the criminal investigation of his now former national security advisor. Based on the folks you, you speak to, how serious a conversation, uh, how seriously is Mueller looking into that? I, I think, well, I mean, I think that's a very important part of what Mueller is looking at as far as the obstruction of justice part of this investigation. But I think if you look at it, uh, you, you also start looking at, at a pattern, right? You look at the other, uh, the one-on-one -on -one dinner where he essentially, he, he's already told the, uh, Comey, the president has already told Comey that he's going to stay on as FBI director. He has a 10-year term after all, but there was no expectation that he was going to leave. But then he starts being transactional and it turns into almost a, a bit of a shakedown, at least the way Comey describes it. I think if you add that with the context of, of the, the, the other meeting where he tells, uh, you know, can you find a way to drop this thing uh, with, with regard to Flynn, you start seeing a bit of a pattern. And then you also notice that Comey thinks all of this is a president who is acting, he's, he's, he says he's got uh, above average intelligence, that he's doing these things quite intentionally. Mm -hmm. So he's not just doing stuff because he's a little right. crazy, he's doing stuff because he intends to do these things. May I defense you often hear. Right. And, right. and may I add one thing to that, which is the other thing that I think that Comey said compellingly was that in the course of these meetings that we've just been talking about, I felt so concerned as to go back home and immediately write contemporaneous memoranda. Now, he leaked one, and that's unacceptable. But, but not he, illegal, again, is it? Illegal? No, not illegal. It's not not illegal. He has a First yeah. Amendment right to do that. It was an unclassified memo. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't have done it, in my estimation, but he did do it. But the point is that he told us, I was so concerned, my state of mind, witness state of mind, that I wrote contemporaneous memos right then and there to memorialize, yeah. memorialize those conversations. So if, in fact... When those memos go to Mueller, which they have, and he has to assess credibility of witness, witness one, Comey, witness two, president, and you have these contemporaneous memos, then I think what we saw here from Comey was a compelling state of you know, my, mind what, about what was what, going on there, which was to him concerning, and I think that's going to be important to Mueller's evaluation of who's telling the truth about these situations that we've been talking about. But, but couldn't you argue also that he was 
a fired, spurned employee, which not is what is motivating wrote, him no, right excuse now. Excuse me, Jack. But, but, not just one second. Not at the but, time but, he wrote okay, the memo. Then, then I would say, Mr. Comey, you said in this interview tonight that you thought the president was a liar. The first, the first, very first meeting. Why did you quit right then? If you're such a high integrity, the higher calling or whatever the name of your book is, which I probably won't read. But um, oh, you should read it. There's some, there, there's some stuff that you might be able to use. Okay, actually, then I'll look at it. <laughs> if y'all will read, I can put you some cash. pages. We'll, we'll have a book club. But Jack, that's right. but, um, but 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 here's my point. If he is so great, if he's such a Christ figure, why did he not quit right then and there? Because everybody knew by January 2017 that Trump was the man who in, in one of his last right. meetings in the book he describes in one of his last meetings with uh, President Obama he tells President Obama that he's dreading the next yeah. four years so I think to your point again you might want to read the book there's stuff in there <laughs> that will tell you a little I'm bit about his clip. state of mind mm -hmm. going into this and I think I think it's relevant all right we got to go because we're just getting our first excerpt from the interview uh, the new interview that James Comey did uh, and in it he reveals what the president told him about Vladimir Putin and what he wouldn't say.